Season one, episode two, guys, we're already here. And I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in to season one, episode one, featuring Marcella. So today, we're going to dive into the fashion world. And today's guest goes by the name of Haruna Jabek. Now, he's an incredible creative artist. He's a model, an influencer, and overall, a big, big deal in the fashion world today. We got the chance to sit down with him and really find out how he got into fashion and how he was able to take his own culture into fashion, create his own lane, which is pretty hard to do in today's world. We also got the chance to find out how he lands these big brand deals and how he was able to travel the world and walk the biggest catwalks in fashion, including London Fashion Week and Paris Fashion Week. And we also got the chance to find out how he disrupts the fashion world with his own creative mind and how he's able to inspire his community and bring his culture into action. This is What's Your Art, the documentary series, guys. Season one, episode two. Enjoy. It's recording. All right, let's get into it, man. So, guys, thank you for joining in to another episode of What's Your Art, uh, the creative platform, the documentary series. So today we have a very, very special guest. He's a model, he's an influencer, and you've probably seen his stuff all over London, especially on billboards. He's on every single catwalk you can imagine. And uh, we're gonna get into his life story. We're gonna get into uh, how he started um, his modeling career and, and his passion for fashion. And uh, without further ado, we got Haruna Jabek in the building. Welcome, my bro. Hello, hello. How's everyone? Thank oh, good, man. Me. How you been? How you been? I'm good, you know, just lockdown and just, you know, staying in, finding other ways to occupy myself, Absolutely. trying to keep my connections. So we're going to get into all the fashion stuff. I'm going to get into like, you know, how you landed your brand deals and how you connected with um, all these fashion labels. But how did this all started for you? Um, so it started around 2016. Um, I knew a photographer and this was about in uni, like second, third year. Um, and I knew a photographer and she was to want to do photography. So I decided to do a shoot with her, a shoot with the concept. Around that time, I wanted to show um, masculinity in a different way. So like how change the narrative of the alpha male. Um, and uh, I felt like, especially among the black community, or other ethnicities is to portray differently of how an alpha male should be. And so I always wanted to show it in a different way. And so like the first shoot is like with um, a really big um, photographer now, her name's Darshan and she does like, she's an influencer. Um, she also does like loads of influencing and everything. And we did a shoot with like a flower and then it went on BBC. Oh wow. And so, yeah, I had a BBC, like I had a flower to my face and it's like showing masculinity in a different way. I've seen that photo and, on Instagram. Yeah. yeah, so, and that, that from there, it just kept on, I kept on doing more and more shoots. Right. Different photographers, find photographers to shoot with, because some photographers have connections where if people that they are dealing with can see your photo. Yeah. Like, it leads up to opportunities of other things but yeah that's how it started and I was really trying to keep connections with people I realized the different ways to get into modeling being signed by agency or just having connections or even just getting scouted yeah. um, finding my way to maneuver around different scams there's a lot of scams in model agency as well yeah, yeah. there's yeah. agencies that are not real but they'll tell you so if anyone ever tells you to pay for an agency like a pay for a shoot right it's fake. It's, there, oh, there's, there, it's happened to me. I don't know if people want to get into like the fashion industry or anything like that. So this is really good information. So you're saying that that shouldn't happen in the first round. Is that what you're saying? No. Yeah, yeah. So an agency. So what happened was, it's an agency and they called me in for casting and open casting as agencies do. So they pose up like a real agency. They'll have a website, everything. And right. You go there, you do the, sh the photos, you do the shoot, and then afterwards they'll pull you into the room and tell you, oh, we sent these off to our bookers and they really like your face, they want to sign you, but you right. need to pay for the portfolio pictures, which an agency will never ask you to do that, to pay for portfolio pictures. So yeah, they'll ask you to pay some a certain amount of money, it will be over a grand, and you will lose that money. 
Right. <laughs> that's basically a scam. And yeah, I'm, yeah. I've, I've heard that that's been happening to a few of my friends as well. And um, obviously, being in like the you know being an influencer, like you're you're exposed obviously on Instagram, especially on Instagram. And right. yeah, scams come through. And then especially if you're new to the industry, you don't know anything about these ins and outs with the scams. Your you know your initial like you know thought is to oh my god like yeah of course you know someone's reached out to me let's let's do this without even. Yeah reading terms and conditions or even researching about the company or the PR company, right? Yeah. So it's, that's I didn't hesitate. I just went down there and they had, I still remember the place, they had the studio, they obviously hired out the studio for the day in Camden. Yeah. They had many people there, you had parents with their kids thinking their baby's going to be on Baby Gap or something. Like, they paying money. And I, I, I like, they'll tell you a sign, I call my brother, my life is gonna change, it's like, ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, then like, they'll tell you a sign and then you will never hear from them again. You ask them about shoots, um, how they're promoting they you. Take your money and that's it, done. Yeah, they yeah that's it. Yeah, wow. it's terrible, but make sure it doesn't happen to you. Every industry you. has that, right? Every every industry, fashion or cre- the creative industry or the movie industry, Every industry have these scams and it's really, really important to like really do your homework and research before, you know, you step into like these labels and companies that first of all, you haven't even heard of. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So Yeah, because when I snatch them up again afterwards, they were on the blacklist. Yeah. Like there's a blacklist of like eight. Okay, wow. Okay. These are not real. Yeah. So if you want to send your agency, you should go on models.com and see the list of all of the agencies that will push you and models, agencies at models.com as well are like industry level agencies that right. when brands go to look for models, they only go on like models.com or unless they know people and you can have your own portfolio. Think of it like a LinkedIn for models. Wow. So models.com is the official site that you always have to reach out to. Yeah. Perfect, my man. Perfect. And you'll see all the agencies you can get their details and go to like open calls and it would be great from there. Did you always have this passion as if you wanted to be a, a model and you wanted to get into the fashion industry before that shoot or did it all develop from that shoot that you uh, um, had flower that which one on BBC? Um, I always wanted to work in fashion but I didn't know what to, I wanted to do. Okay. I wanted to eventually um, now I know I eventually want to do styling or like okay. creative direction. Right. Uh, but that only came, I would say, like last year because it takes a while to know where you're going to go in modeling. And then after a while, you have to, you have to realize that modeling is not like a, you can't do it for the rest of your life. No one can. It's, a, it's, a, it's like football, it's a career with a, with a cap on it because of your age. Absolutely. And at the time, when I was in uni doing computer science. So I wanted to work in tech, but yeah. I love fashion. But I, I knew that I needed a degree to work in tech. So, yeah. well, at that time, you need yeah. a degree to work in tech. Yeah. And so, like, that's what I did. And then I did the shoot because I decided to start doing, like, things that are my passion. Um, came down from Leicester because I went to Leicester Uni, did the shoot. And from then, that's when I wanted to venture into modeling. Different people right. were telling me about Because at the time, I didn't think you could make any money from modeling. I just thought there's people that post pictures on Instagram and... That, that's it like they yeah. but now obviously as things have gone on things have changed as yeah. influencers blew up at the time so many influencers so many new ways to make money and even now it's changing again because of the climate that we're absolutely. in and yeah. absolutely now that 100 100% exploring and trying to find out my way to do everything properly I rate you for really like thinking through you know that journey of you know transitioning from doing tech and then jumping into fashion not knowing what you're going to expect it's going to be a tough and a long journey especially coming into fashion obviously fashion is a very com like it's really there's a, there's a lot of competition in fashion yeah. so how do you, you still be yourself and still kill the game and still move forward and still get like these amazing deals and and walk walk the catwalks um, when I came into fashion, I was by myself, like connecting. I used to go to events by myself. So it gave me like a different outlook. I was like always an outsider, so I could see who to be around, who not to be around, like really. Like when you speak to some models and you speak to them about their goals, some of them don't have any. Some of them, they just, they just want to milk how much money they can make. 
for doing a couple of ASOS shoots. And that's yeah. it. Like, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. But me, I wanted to make it more, make it into the career. So from that, I kept on seeing different ways to navigate mm -hmm. and always having side projects that you are working on that show your ability and all your passion. However, you should always keep on. I had those and then I also had shoots that I'm doing constantly to keep on showing that I am modeling and that I can do different types of modeling, different shoots. Because once I started doing shoots about masculinity mm -hmm. and I came in to modeling, that's all people associated me with. Like, right. And then I kept on getting those type of shoots. So eventually I said, I want to move away from doing masculinity type shoots and do some more urban shoots, some more streetwear shoots to find my look. And then I met um, a stylist called Yon and two photographers called the Masons. Right. Um, I had a really good shoot with them. And they are like really experienced and they helped me create my image of more of, so that I can stand out in London. Because London is very, very competitive. And then when I went to Paris, they find out like, in Paris is a different ball game, even more, because they, they don't really, they take people from London, but it's more, it's, it's especially like black people, they will take people from Africa, because they already have that international mindset in their head. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, they yeah. know that they have to, but most people think, oh, just, I'm just going to get in London and see how it is. But because the internet is so big now, you can't do that. People in Paris have already seen you and, and stuff like that. It was what I found out when I went there. People had already, when I went to apply for agencies, they had already seen my face, stuff like that. So just have, I would say keeping up with the times and the way things are changing and always keeping your personal projects to keep a proper narrative to your career. And that will set everything in stone. What you've done is you didn't wait. So like most people, like you said, they just there for the shoot, get the money, and then that's it. You had a bigger vision. So what you did was you created your own side projects and you still kept on making noise. You kept shooting, yeah. kept like promoting yourself. So ultimately you created your own brand. Yeah, yeah. Brand, and I'm, branding is branding. I'm really like I'm a I'm a big advocate for that. I think everyone should have a personal brand because you are your brand. And that leads into collaborating and connecting with different other artists. In your case, it's other models and other photographers. So you went heavy on connecting with photographers, right? Yeah, and heavy on photographers. Yeah. yeah, heavy on other models, heavy on brands. Yeah. Even supporting small brands, smaller brands can benefit a lot. Some people wouldn't, well, if they get a DM about doing a shoot with a small brand, they wouldn't do it. But yeah. if you could do a shoot with a small brand, brand and you can show them all your abilities and that's a lot better because you're adding value to yourself so i shot with some people and helped them create content like and they're paying me regularly because i've created content and paying more than they would have if i just modeled for them Absolutely. and yeah it was it was also me slowly moving into creative direction as well um then i started when i did london fashion week i started connecting with production managers um people who be managing four catwalks like for one one fashion week right i met loads of people who were really high up in in fashion doing loads of um, shoots or like um, production for prada different they have a connection with different studios and they will have like 50 followers on instagram they don't really? <laughs> they don't they don't so i was new like yeah networking and people know you it still counts a lot more than yeah. people who have many more many following. However, yeah, followers, yeah, it, followers don't mean nothing. Like I, yeah. I used to have the same issue, right? I, <laughs> when I started Instagram, I used to be about it was all about the followers, you know. I need to get this many followers. I need to like connect these people so that they can follow me. And it was all about followers, and I got lost. I got lost, and I said, why am I? What am I doing? I'm doing this yeah. for a follower. A follower would mean nothing. It's mm. about I would rather have 50 good people that who's influential, valuable, and, and I, I have a deep, meaningful con like a relationship with them. And then yeah. I start my portfolio with that 50 followers. That's more mm. meaningful and that's more powerful. Yeah, yeah. Right? That's, how, that's how I had the mindset. Then there's also a flip side to that, which is when I started getting a lot more shoots, I got um, one shoot for Puma, which said they'll wow. fly to Portugal 
everything. But if you have less than ten thousand followers, the pay for you yeah. is like three hundred to seven hundred. Right. If you have over ten k, you get like twenty k. And you two will be in a shoot together, standing next to each other. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, <that's- laughs> Okay, so these are these are like challenges you have, right? I mean, the thing is, right? I could have, I could have seven hundred followers, and I could get six hundred and fifty likes and six hundred and fifty comments. That's mm-hmm. all a ninety percent conversion rate. Whereas you have say three thousand followers, and you only get two hundred likes and ten comments. Mm-hmm. So I think you know, for me, I think brands should now look into statistics. And really, yeah, and engagement, what the yeah. engagement is because it's all about the reach and the engagement. It helps if you have that many followers, like it, hundred percent, it does. But I think I love the fact that you still staying true to yourself, and you just want to provide value and you just want to like inspire your community. Yeah, because what I want to do is build a a really good target audience that know me as a person yeah. online, and it takes time, but it will pay off. Um, it did. It did have me decide when some shoots I do. I know the other person will be getting paid more than me because of their following, and that that is what I'm saying about keeping up with changes, because influencers start coming in at a fast rate, and they've got followers. Yeah. So that's what changed businesses, especially now when we're all at home. People they're selecting, like people have a. Uh, crazy amount of reach yeah but you can also have reach because i had a lot of reach on my instagram because different instagrams were posting and reposting my pictures that's it even so as well and i don't have twitter yeah. so those type of things made my face be everywhere where people would say i've seen your face but i don't know who your name or who you are because they don't follow me but they've seen me yeah. on instagram because and, every time yeah, i see you up, to- <laughs> every time i see your updates <laughs> You know, you're on a board or you're in a bus or something. It's so cool, man. This is amazing. Like, all right, so talk to me about the biggest fashion event in the world, London Fashion Week, Milan Fashion Week. Talk to me about the, the experience of traveling and then landing opportunities on these big platforms. Oh, yeah. I'll start with London. I did London first, I think, 20, 2018. 2018, I did London. Okay. And it was like a smaller presentation, so it was quite good match for me to start with. Yeah, I didn't know the different. I knew I knew always watched um, London Fashion Week, but presentation. I didn't know how different the presentation is to catwalk, and presentation is more intimate, and people actually want to know and talk to the models. Yeah, and that went close, and that was my first one. The next year, I did two shows for Fashion Week. And I did the catwalks, and it was it was a very good opportunity. In London, you connected a lot more with people because you are you are in London. I started getting a lot more following, a lot more connections with people. Great. And for this year, start of this year, um, I did London Fashion Week for Band of Outsiders, and two years in a row, I didn't get into their show. Okay. But the last year, I got into the show because the casting director just saw how persistent I was to be That's in. Because some models, they'll go to one casting. Yeah. They'll go to one casting and they, they won't get selected and, and they'll be like, I'm not going there anymore. The, the guy <laughs> didn't like me. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's yeah. easy to get this part like that because in modeling, it's, there's no other way to say it than people are, they're quite fake. They will say they love you as a model, but really, like, they're crossing you off the list. I've seen it happen to people where I'm... And that's so, why I ask, um, like, how do you still be yourself and, you know, still... <laughs> I know, because I know you come across different types of people and different types of energy, you know, and, mm. it, and, it's, and it's great to see that you're still focused on your vision as a model. Yeah. So you did London Fashion Week, then you did Paris Fashion Week and Milan. Yeah, Paris. This Paris was this year. Um, so Paris, um, I had just got signed to IMM. So um, that was in December, I just got signed. And then I was telling them, I'm already going to be in Paris. Like, I'm doing London Fashion Week. It'll be good for me to do Paris as well. Let's see if you can push me out to some people out there. Yeah. Um, I was going to Paris because I had a shoot that I had organized myself. And I was going to different shows through PR companies that I had connected with. Yeah. Um, when I landed in Paris, I got a call from my new booker 
and he said, you need to be, did game some random address in Paris and said, you need to be here at 4 p.m. I've just come off the Eurostar. <laughs> I'm looking for my, wow. my Airbnb. I don't know where it was, but I was overwhelmed at that point. I was like, whoa, I need to be here. And like, I already have a show, Fashion Week. I haven't even been in Paris for one hour. Um, and that's when I saw like the level of where I need to be, how organized I need to be more. Mm-hmm. Especially when I was in an agency that's trying to push me more. Because before I was with an agency that they didn't do much for me and I had to go out there and find my own connections. Right. So, yeah, it was it was overwhelming. And also when you get to Paris, you realize things are a lot different. Paris is, um, like, compared to London, like in London you get some celebrities, but in Paris, like, every everywhere you look, there's someone. Yeah. And it's a lot because Paris is, um, like, set the home of Paris fashion. It was exciting. Yeah, it was exciting. And yeah. then the next day, there's an artist that I follow called Kid Super. That's okay. really big. And he has connections with Puma. Um, he ha- held open casting. I messaged him on Instagram, thinking he wasn't going to reply. Then he replied and said, yes, wow. come. And went to his open casting, literally did the, the walk, everything. And he said, I want you in my show. Also modeled beside one of my favorite rappers who was with them, because they were from America. So right, right, right. <laughs> they, they all came. And it was it was cool, and it gave me a lot of confidence to see like I can also network in Paris. It's very similar to London, but how Paris is more. They have a higher standard of of modeling, and I found I found that out quick. You know, you you can see how you you know you really like put put your focus into London Fashion Week. You you made a ground, you did the groundwork there, you made your connections, and then that evolved into international connections. So I guess the key here is to regardless of what you do is to constantly network constantly network meet new people build a solid relationship with them not just on social but you know yeah using social socials but then eventually making it a human connection and you have your network yeah the of networking is it is really really important i think the next goal for me probably um for this i'm always i'm someone that's always thinking about the next goal um, so next goal for me would have been Milan, um, but Milan Fashion Week got cancelled because of Corona, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but to be actually signed in Paris, because the models I talk to that are signed there, the job rate is higher. A lot of brands there, there's a sm- like they do e-commerce all the time. Yeah. And Paris is a, it's a nice city. It's a nice, it's such a nice city to be there. Yeah. So. I think that'll be the next goal. But talk to me about collaboration. What, what, what does that mean to you, and how important is it to you, uh, being in the fashion industry? So collaboration is probably is everything. Everything that you see on Instagram is a collaboration, and no one is doing the shoot by themselves. So that's why it's the most important thing. Um, I put collaborations on two different levels. If you're collaborating okay. with a brand, or if you're collaborating with a creative, but the elements of it are the same. Um, so that, first thing I will say is you need to offer like respect to people whenever like someone asks me to collaborate I'm not going to skip the DM because they're this person with 100 followers or and then I because you have some people who skip that one but they'll go to the brand yeah. because they yeah because it's a brand um, I think that's that's what made people want to collaborate with me more because they'll see that I'm, I'm someone that's keen to work you keep um, going out there, you're connecting, you're sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm um, willing to step out of my comfort zone a lot. Like going back to Paris, the collaboration shoot there when I met the designer that was styling me in the clothes. From instantly, I walked into the brand because I, I instantly, when they sent me a message, I researched the brand quickly. I'd heard of them before, but I didn't really know their clothes. When I walked in, I knew this is a brand that's catered more for gay people like the guy was wearing briefs everything and then that's what I instantly got the image of the brand however he saw that I was willing to step out of my comfort zone I was doing it there was other models that came to the casting they saw what type of brand what type of clothes they had and said I don't do it you em- that's, made- that's, and that's you embracing culture man you embracing people you know you respecting and embracing that culture which is yeah. you know it, it's a sign of of a, of a great creative and a great leader man so I really yeah well, that's really Thank you. really impressive. That's Collaboration really- is everything. It, it's, it's me, it's the way, when you see, when you get to a level and you see how every shoot is put together, 
every everyone that's tagged them that's saying everything they've done then you see how important it is to have a connection of people that you know like i know i know emmy ways i know photographers i know people i can call for studio different things if i need to create something yeah um, so collaboration is it's probably your whole career. Same with yeah. me. Everything that I do, trying to collaborate, yeah. collaborate with more fashion now, and um, it's it's great because I, I'm I'm able to meet new people. I met you, you know, yeah. and like we've also been great for you to collaborate exactly. with. And to me, that's you know, and we're we're having this conversation here, and to me, that's like that means so much more than anything else. And we respect each other's crafts, and we try and you know bring them together. So talk to me, how can someone break into the industry? What, what are kind of the first few steps they should take? I feel there's many different ways. The way to do it by the book is that you go on a place like model.com, find all the agencies that do open calls, even call them to see if they do it and go there and see what, which agencies will take you find out the difference between different agencies because not every agency that has a big following is good because yeah. some of them are boutique agencies some of them focus more on girls some of them focus on girls that do catwalks some of them focus on girls that do pretty little thing you have to know what type of model you want to be? do um, yeah yeah modeling you want to be so that that will play a big part in your decision of which agency you go to um, holler at photographers try and do your own test shoots so when if someone looks at your portfolio or your Instagram they see that this is what you want to do this is your level of shoots don't always do the same type of shoots as like just posing by a, a wall or something try and make your own concept yeah. try and yeah, try and do something that's relevant let's say you want to do it now and you start you, know, you want to do a concept about staying home to maybe try and do a stay home shoot mm -hmm. or something like that. Just an example, as, as times change, there'll be different yeah. like, concepts to make up. But I that'll guess be right? the best thing. There's plenty of ideas out there and you can make it your yeah. own. And then uh, again, you're building your brand and you're building yourself and you're building a portfolio. And these are things you can do for free in your own time, you have time. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. sometimes even a self-timing camera, you just put it out there and then you shoot yourself. If you can't find photographers in that time, you know, mm. time is valuable, right? So you got to use the time that you have with the resources that you have and then do what you can. And anything is possible in that in that sense. Yeah. I, another thing I'll say is um, make sure you know what type of, what your target audience is. Yeah. What type of man or woman do you want to represent? What type of person? Who do you want? Do you want to cater for LGBT community? How do you want to, like, when someone looks at your Instagram, do you want someone to see themselves in you, like, or are you just a a, a, um, a styling icon for, like, if you create a, your own style, mm -hmm. you have to know how it, how your page would be translated to someone if they just come and look at it. You have to see see your page. I always do it to my own page as well. I look, I look at my page and see how people look at my page if yeah. they were me. Yeah, so no, that makes it's, sense. it's helped a lot because you yeah. can always look at your page and say, oh, this was this and this and that. But if it's not clear as a narrative, yeah. what you are, what you do. So Haruna, before we wrap up, I got one last question for you. Yeah. What you do as yourself, as, a, as an amazing person, as a creative artist, what impact would you want to leave in this world with what you do? Wow. <laughs> okay. So um, for me, uh, I want people to know that whatever idea they have in their head, if you put enough weight behind it and hard work, you can to do. Um, I, can, I want to influence that people can be whoever they want to be. Um, whatever whatever um, background you come from, you can make it to a place where you are representing people from a certain stature that you feel that didn't have the confidence before. That's that's what I, I really want to do. I want to make people have confidence, which is why I just always put my best foot behind everything. Whenever I'm presenting anything I'm doing, 
it's always in a, in a good way. If it's not right, I won't release it yet. It's, yeah, that's what I want to do, influence and inspire people. That's amazing, man. That's great to hear. And I know you're on the right path and it's all about, you know, again, collaborating and making a difference. So guys, you know, if you want to get in touch with Haruna, it's right here. I'm going to put all the details below. You can, um, you know, reach out to him. Any questions that you have in terms of modeling, you want to get to know him, connect with him. Uh, he's a great guy. And Haruna, I just want to say thank you so much for jumping on um, the documentary series. Um, you know, look forward to more collaborations with you in the future. And again, all the best with all the work that you're doing. Keep me posted, bro. And I will. love, man. Stay safe. Stay safe. Thanks, man. No problem, bro. No worries. <laughs>